In the red corner, standing at over three inches with a quiff, 2.4 pounds soaking wet, but don't get it wet or it won't work ever again. Monolith of Gaming, discontinued in 2002, whose reach is still felt to this day, the Nintendo 64. In the blue corner, a light-footed contender born of the digital age, having no discernible weight or height, but virtually all the stamina available to endure forever, the My Nintendo Store. Come on, kid, get up. Stop trying to go the distance with him. Look at you. Look at me. You passed 20. You pushed your prime. You ain't made for this. Digital's got all the advantages and longevity. One day, your cartridges are gonna rot. You're gonna cease to function. Meanwhile, the storage space on that guy's minimal. The games can never break. I warned you, you got no hope against digital. I bet a million years from now, my descendants playing on their government-mandated Disney Entertainment consoles. They're gonna have The Legend of Time, Zelda, Ocarina, port it over. All right, here's the plan. We go for the preservation paradox. We just hope that the future owners don't want it. One too many Rocky movies, perhaps, but not too far-fetched. Nintendo could decide tomorrow that they don't want me to have Ocarina of Time as it is. The next time I receive an online update for the Switch, the game could be changed, it could be tweaked, it could be removed. And the only way I could still play is by turning my Switch into a fugitive and going off-grid to live out the rest of its days, forfeiting the ability to ever play another game that doesn't come with a physical copy. Actually, you have to check in to Nintendo Switch Online every seven days, so the rest of its days is about a week. Consider the fact that 87% of all the games ever made are no longer available, and physical games have been slowly going out of style. It's estimated only 10.5% of game purchases are physical nowadays. Within a few more generations, I can see consoles with slots for discs turning into collector's items. We're more than halfway there. We already have Xboxes and Playstations that are digital only. And when digital's the only thing left, the expiration date of every digital item you've ever purchased will be at the whims of the companies that sold it. It ain't fear-mongering and ain't a future dystopian prospect for your descendants to deal with. It's a creeping occurrence at present. The Wii U and Nintendo 3DS eShop were discontinued in March 2023. The Xbox 360 Marketplace will shut down in July 2024. Sure, I don't expect them to continue selling the same old games hardly anyone's buying. That was common when physical gaming was king, and these older games can still be played if you bought them on older systems or they're being ported over to newer systems. But here's what they didn't do. Sony announced that it was taking away the PS5 PS Plus collection after May 9th, 2023. It was reshuffling older, popular games you could claim for free with an original subscription like Batman Arkham Knight and The Last Guardian into the game catalog and classics catalog, each needing more expensive subscriptions. You can no longer claim these games for free. Now, if you did claim one of those games for free but you don't have a subscription plan, well, you can't play the game. And as of December 31st, 2023, PlayStation will be removing 1,318 films and seasons of TV shows. Anyone who paid for Discovery content through the PlayStation Store will no longer be able to access it in any way, shape, or form that includes your Mythbusters, your River Monsters. Oof, you were better off buying the Blu-ray. Ubisoft has taken down the crew after 10 years in 2024. Even if you have a disc, you won't be able to use it. You see, games have always come with small print, known as the End User License Agreement that says you don't own your games, but rather you purchase a license to play that can be taken away at any point for any reason. It was just harder to enforce before the days of online gaming, Nintendo would have to show up to your house. A common misconception is that the EULA is unenforceable. The reality, upheld by different courts around the world, is that digital purchases have made these contracts even more rock solid. Some games don't let you play until you click accept, Others make you scroll through the contract before allowing you to press accept. This is known as click wrap. The contract doesn't disappear, so you can read it at your own pace. You ain't forced to accept it. You own a license to play your games held up by good faith, and it could disappear tomorrow. However, there's a wild card in the deck. How many people who haven't broken the rules of a game have had their games taken away from them, be it physical or digital? Have you or someone you know and love been exposed to a revoked gaming license? Uh, yes, I know I purchased a revocable license. I always read the terms and services. I'm not a thoroughly paranoid man, but a thorough paranoid man. Even then, I've never known someone to lose a license without cause, be it digital or physical. I've only recently come to terms with online multiplayer games being more ephemeral, and single-player games being in a constant state of flux is an even more recent phenomenon. I genuinely believe it's a reasonable assumption to make that digital sells itself on its compact nature and durability. Am I wrong in thinking that the average law-abiding citizen who buys video games digitally assumes it will last longer than a physical purchase?
The average gamer doesn't understand that they don't own their games and that's because of lack of due diligence. Fine, I'll concede the gamers need to take that one to the chin. But the revocable license, traditionally used to fight copyright infringement, being used to revoke access to content before the natural expiration of a physical system, is essentially unheard of, and that's not something the average customer is considering when deciding between digital or physical. It's far from a common practice in the industry, it goes against our reasonable assumptions from the 1980s when the media was only physical, it goes against our reasonable assumptions from when things started shifting to digital. This is a fairly new issue well into the streaming age with no measures to prevent it, and now that digital's the dominant format, there is no foreseeable way to turn back. Let's not kid ourselves, we're not going back to brick and mortar, this PC doesn't even have a disc tray. But the silver lining is that I believe change is easier after people get burned. It's unfortunate that most change is only possible after the fact, but it's better than change being impossible before and after. When PC was having its growing pains with an online marketplace is when Steam implemented the refund policy, and the window of opportunity has only grown wider since then. Right now is the best time to bring this up and be heard to establish better consumer practices. I know, I know, there's someone that's been screaming at me since the beginning of this video and others are admiring my fortitude for lasting this long without bringing up piracy. That's a different topic and I've already used up my 40 minute slot. It can be considered an ethical or moral discussion, but in the end I think it's an issue of finance and accessibility, or as Gabe Newell put it in 2011, piracy is not a pricing issue, it's a service issue. The easiest way to stop piracy is not by putting anti-piracy technology to work, it's by giving those people a service that's better than what they're receiving from the pirates. Due to the preservation paradox, the quality of service from Sony's in question, so I wouldn't be surprised if there were more people blowing the dust off of their swashbuckling hats. For people who don't like breaking laws, but you want to be involved as well. You prefer your lawful compliance on the malicious side. If you're in the market for a console, I'd recommend an Xbox. Not because I think it's genuinely better than a PlayStation or a Switch, I think console wars are petty tribalism for people who don't like regular sports. But I've been scouring the web for hours and I can't find any solid stance from Sony or Nintendo saying that swapping to digital will provide customers with longevity. They both claim ease of access and transferability, but neither has gone on record saying digital increases the life expectancy of games. Meanwhile, Phil Spencer, the head of the Xbox brand, has gone on record to say Xbox designs with preservation in mind. Does it mean I believe they won't pull licenses away? The hopeful in me says yes, the cynic in me is laughing at the hopeful in me. But I believe a reasonable person would take Phil Spencer on his word. Because of his official statement that preservation is front and center when all these decisions are made, there's a reasonable assumption to believe that digital Xbox products will last longer than physical products. And if they don't, well then that means Xbox will be easier to sue than Sony or Nintendo.